Okay. So, glory be to God. Can you hear me better? Can you hear me? All right, good. So, now that all protocols have been duly observed, let's quickly run. I'll try as much as possible to say everything I want to say in 15 minutes. And then you pray for 10 minutes. That prayer of 10 minutes can increase to another 15 minutes depending on how well you pray. In all that you do, I want you to listen very, very carefully to every word that I say. You might not capture all of it. You might need to listen again. So immediately after this conference, try as much as possible to listen again. As I said, I thought I would have two sessions. So I wanted to take watchers and I wanted to take judges. But now because of this one session, I have to take it at the same time. But if my 15 minutes should elapse, I will stop where I stop. That means that's what the Holy Spirit will want us to sleep on. So let's go quickly to Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 7. Can you increase it a bit? I always like to hear you. As long as the people can hear me, I would increase my voice. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 7. Can we read it together loud? One, two, go. Are we all there? Is it on our screen? Okay, let's go. One, two, go. Together. I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, you shall hear a word from my mouth and you shall warn them for me. So let's look at that verse and just analyze it very quickly. God was the one speaking here and he was speaking to a man called the son of man. Every time you see the word son of man, the easiest way for you to understand it is from our normal way of speaking in this part of the world there are people that are referred to as son of the soil and most times when that word is used for a man usually it is when that man has attained a very high position and is someone that they can say to others emulate this person so sometimes a politician, when they are giving him an award, celebrating him, they would say of him that he's a son of the soil because what the people of that society are trying to do is that they are trying to say that all of us together, this man is all of us. So he is of us. So when God is speaking to a man and saying to him, son of man, he's speaking to a man that is representing more than just himself it could be a family it could be a nation it could be a community it could be a continent but when you see son of man is representing more than himself another person that had that name was jesus christ himself he was called son of man because he was representing more than himself. That is why he sacrificed. And one man's sacrifice can be a solution for many people's sin. That's the first point I want you to note. Number two is that God begins to speak to this son of man and said to him that I have made you a watchman. When you look at other translations, maybe some of the new translations you will see that one of the things that was used instead of the word made is that i have set thee so what god does for the son of man is that he also appoints him as a watchman a setting a making the son of man does not just take the position of a watchman naturally by birth. There is a making process that now qualifies him to become a watchman. 
That is to mean that your journey with God will not automatically, you know, you won't get to that point. You won't be born again and immediately you are set to become that watchman. There will be a making, there will be what the Bible calls a setting. What I would like to call an appointment by God. The best way you can understand this also is in the similitude of if you are looking for a job, you are given an appointment letter. You start your journey first as somebody who, when you are finished being your NYSC, they say it's from copper to gold. So don't let me say unemployed, let me say you start first by being a gold. And after a while, you are given an appointment letter that now puts you in the position of an employed person. That's what God does with the watchman. You see, one of the interesting things about when some of these things happen is that you will realize that maybe nothing will change even in who you are. Nothing will change in your status. Nothing will change. In sometimes, everything about you looks the same. But let me tell you, when God appoints a man, things have changed. Because where things begins to change is first in his mind. When I got married, I always thought that when you get married, things will just change. You know, on that day, everybody's shouting, everybody's dancing, and you're excited about the marriage. And I felt that once we are doing that, take the ring, I do, I do. Something will just come upon me the way... I even thought it would come like an anointing. Because, for example, when the minister was ministering, there's a natural cloak that comes upon me. So I felt, maybe that will come. Until they said it, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife? And I said, I do. Ah, nothing happened. She said, I do. Nothing happened. We went to the reception. Ah, nothing happened. The only difference was that I came into that wedding alone. But now I was living with somebody. I slept on the bed and I was still the same person. That's what happens to at appointment. But guess what? Have I married? Where is the real change happening? It starts here. So when God is speaking to a man and saying to him, I have appointed you. What I'm saying to you is that the people that used to disregard you might still be disregarding you. I'm saying to you that your parents that do not see value in your prayer might still not see value in your prayer. I'm saying to you that your roommates that don't care about the things that you are saying will still not, don't, they will still have that same, you know, behavior towards you. Don't always expect that at the appointment, all of a sudden certain things begin to happen because that's not where anything starts. The first place things start is in your soul, is in your mind. There are three things that lead to this appointment by God. Number one, a man is said to be a watchman by maturity. The moment a man begins to spiritually mature, the next thing God offers that man is that he offers him an appointment of a watchman. Some of us, we understand this from the secondary school, school father, school mother. One that cannot take care of himself cannot be told to take care of another person. But the moment you are getting older, the next thing they begin to say to you is do what? Take care of your brother. I have seen parents even speak to children of five years old to take care of their brother of one. Why? As maturity comes, what is given to you? Appointment. God bless you. You are following. So, one of the things that makes men stagnant, and it looks as if God is not giving them more, is because they are not growing up. So, when you look at 1 Kings chapter 20 verse 39, 1 Kings chapter 20 verse 29, the Bible speaks of a man, the Bible describes that man as a man who found himself in battle. And then somebody said to him, he said, take hold of this man and keep him. But it's not everybody that is commanded to keep. It's not everybody that is commanded to, you know, to preserve. 
1 Kings 20, 39. It's not everybody that is given that assignment. Only the man who found himself in battle. He said, your servant went out into the midst of the battle. People who fight battles are not children. You must be 18 years and above, a level of maturity. He said, and there a man came over and brought a man to me and said, guard this man. So God commits others to you as you mature. It's not something you pray for. It's something you become. If you are not matured, nothing is given to you. We are praying for things that the answer to it is just growing up. The more the capacity, the more you can get. Number two, what brings about this appointment as a watchman? Proximity to God. The closer you are to God, the more he will give you responsibility. The Bible was speaking to us in Genesis chapter 37 verse 14. Joseph was the young child and the one that was loved by his father. But guess what? His father told him to be a watchman. He said, go to your brothers. See to their welfare, the last born. So sometimes responsibility also does not come by maturity. It comes by proximity. If you are close enough to the father, he will tell you things he will not tell old people. And I want some of you to become alert because some of you will dream dreams that general overseers don't have because you have built intimacy with God. During the season of COVID, I had a strange revelation. I saw people wearing face masks. It was October of that year. I just saw people wearing face masks. The last time I saw face masks was during SARS in those days. So I still remember like yesterday, I walked into the church and I announced, everybody, please, let's pray against SARS. I saw people wearing face masks. Because that was all that I understood with the vision. Only for January to come. And the whole world was shut down on COVID. I'm saying to you, you will be told to guard the men because you are close to God. God speaks to men that are close to him. You will hear clearly when you are close to God. You will understand his heart even more. Because you can preach and not know God though. Because there are many people in this world who talk so much about God who have no knowledge of who he is. As a matter of fact, I always tell people the things that happen in the chambers of intimacy are things that nobody sees. If everybody knows your work with God, you don't know God. If everybody has seen everything about your prayer life, you don't pray. Because when you want to have what we describe as intimacy and intercourse, the first thing you do is that you close the windows and you shut the doors. That's the secret. So proximity is how we appoint men. So the man is young like Joseph, but he's sent out to be a guardian. He said, be the one that will be bringing words to me. And he's the last one. What I'm saying to you is that you are well more than qualified to become a watchman of a city. Even though you are the youngest among us, we can choose you. Number three, very quickly. The third one is availability. That's the third thing that brings about an appointment. That a man has become available. And a practical example is Samuel. Samuel in 1 Samuel chapter 3 was in the temple. A temple that had two categories of people. Number one was a prophet that had gone blind. One that was the judge of the nation but could not see. How can you be told to watch and you are blind? The Bible said the eyes of Eliad began to grow dim. That was the man in the temple. The second was the people who are supposed to be his mentors. But the characteristics of their life was that they slept with women by the temple door. They had no regard for God. And when God found nobody that he could speak to, he saw a young boy who did not yet know the Lord. That's what the Bible said about Samuel, that when they examined him, he didn't know God. He says Samuel at that time did not yet know the Lord. That's why God will speak to him and he still did not understand the voice of God until he runs to the blind man to say, I'm hearing a voice. He sounds like your voice and that's why I'm here. That means God sometimes has no choice than to use a man just because that is the only man available. That's why I don't always label men, men of God though. That God used a man does not mean he's a man of God. God uses men that are available. When God decided to speak through a donkey, should the donkey become donkey of God? No. 
But we are in a generation, the moment a man says he has spoken of God, ah, we begin to praise him that he's a man of God. What I'm saying is that there are watchmen that are there just because they are the only ones that were available. You see, these three things are important secrets that if you follow it, <laughs> you're about to become a watchman. Be available, be close to him, and then begin to grow. You have no choice. He will set you because it's an appointment. It's like an appointment letter that he will just give you. And you must be ready to know, just as I said, everything around you may not change, but you have been chosen. There are still men who their ministry is not worldwide, but they control so much of the sustenance of cities because they are controlling it in the four walls of their bedroom on their knees. What I'm saying is that you will not be celebrated by men, but God and heaven knows the ones that they have chosen. Those are the kind of recruitment that God wants to make in this season. It's not, and I want your heart to be ready for it, that it is not in the applause of men. That's not what will make you seek to be a man that God will use. Because a man of God is not in title is being God's man and so if nobody will praise us recognize us for that assignment we will be proud that God knows our name because every time men are not honored people begin to run away from being watchmen but nothing may change people may not applaud you for being a watchman they may not even know it's because of you but there's a God that keeps record as I begin to round off, because my 15 minutes remains 3 minutes, I will mention some things very quickly that will lead us to that prayer point that I'm taking you to. Don't worry, if you pray this well, you will shift. And beyond shifting, a grace will come upon your life that will make you a different person from today. I thought somebody would say amen. Let your amen roar like thunder. Had a watchman in Eden, and his name was Adam. You find it in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. A garden was committed to him, and he was told two things. He said, Keep the garden, tend the garden. I said something in passing, and I will say it again that I want you to learn from very quickly. Number one, a watchman cannot be blind. We cannot ask you to watch and then you can not see. So the first quality that every believer must consistently, powerfully pray for is that God let me see. Number two is that a watchman must be able to see accurately. Because that a man is seeing does not mean he's seeing well oh. Jesus placed his hand upon a man that was blind. And when Jesus asked him, what do you see? What he said to Jesus is that I see men as trees. That's a man that God healed. And then God had to touch his eyes again so that he would see clearly. We are in a generation of men who are seen but are not seen accurately. Because it is in your seeing accurately as a watchman that you will be able to name accurately. Because the assignment of a watchman will be to identify and to name. I want you to look at some of the stories. I'm sure, I don't know anyone at the top of my head, but I'm certain that it has happened in this country whereby somebody has been killed and they thought he was a thief. Has it happened before? It must have happened. It's Nigeria. This country that even when they know that you are not a thief, they will still shoot. So there will be many cases like that. And one of the reasons why it happened is because the man that was given the assignment of watching could not identify the one that is a thief. And so also there will be men that should be judged, should be taken as a thief, but because they could not see clearly, they allowed the person to go. So there are men that are seen, but cannot see clearly. And there's only one antidote to when a man cannot see, is to ask God for mercy. And that's the story of Bartimaeus in Luke chapter 18 verse 38. His cry was, thou son of David, have mercy on me. 
And Jesus had to ask him, what do you want me to do for you? He said that my eyes may see. Because people come to God for many and different reasons. And you need to be specific. Let me see. Listen to me. If God answers that important prayer in your life, you will never remain the same again. People are in trouble today because they cannot see. They can't see themselves. Of every value of God upon their life, they cannot see it. The only thing that they recognize is what is in others. They can see the glory that is in somebody else. But when it comes to the giftings of God in their life, they can't see it. There are some, and that's why I spoke about naming properly. There are some that despite the things that God has given them, they still see it as too little, too insignificant, of no value. And this thing that God has given me has nothing to account for in my life. Here is something that God asked me one day. He said to me, what will you do with what I've given you? Because on that day, I went before God and I was asking and crying out for more. Give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. And that's the prayer of many people. We think that what we need is more. But here comes God who is asking, what will you do with what I've already given you? Because for some of us, you will not be giving more. What you first need to see is that what you have been given is already a treasure. And if you will walk on that treasure, it will feed millions. Because when you see that young boy coming into that place that there were 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fishes, you, you will pass him by and you will not know that that boy is the answer to 5,000 people's hunger. Oh, you, you will look at him and you will not even pick him up on the road. And you won't know that that person is the one that will feed you. Because even Jesus will be incapacitated until he sees that boy seed. That's how it is with many people. You are holding five loaves of bread and two fishes and you think it's too small. But God is looking at it and saying, what will I do with this boy? Who has not recognized that all he needs to feed a generation is still this small thing. But your eyes have not been opened to it. When Jesus Christ asked them, he said, how are we going to feed the people? Everybody says, see, there's no way we can do it. Let's send them away. And yet was a boy with five loaves and two fishes. How come? How will a boy know that what he has, as small as that, can feed? Even five loaves can't feed all of us here. What is it that enters a man's head that he can just see that I'm more? In the space of what looks as if it's nothing, he just knows this is it. This, is, this thing that God has given me is the answer. Oh, if you can't see it, you will be so trapped in praying. God, give me and you have all that is given to you. All that will make you into what you never thought that you can be. Oh, some of us, is still a small mobile phone. It's not going to be different because God has answered many of our prayers. The problem is that you still cannot see. And God asked me, he said, what will you do with what I've given you? It was in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23 I saw a mystery. The Bible was speaking about the mother of Moses. Ah, you will soon pray. Maybe we should pray that first prayer point. But let me finish this. It was the mother of Moses. The Bible said that she hid Moses for three months. At the time when Pharaoh announced and said, you know what? Every male child should be killed. And then the chariots and army of Egypt were entering into this house of the Israelites and snatching their children off their hand. But here was a woman who when Moses was born, while everybody was losing their seed, all of a sudden the Bible said she decided to hide her own. You see that hiding is that she preserved her own. She became a watchman for her destiny. In this generation, you, you might not know, but people are still losing destiny. Some, some people have lost it today. This morning, some people still lost destiny. This night is how many will still lose destiny. The same gift that God gave you that he gave others, some will still throw it away tonight. But this woman just had a passion and she decided to hide her own because she did what? Ah, shout it loud. Because she did what? What she did was that her eyes were just open and she saw whose child is ugly. 
What the Bible says, according to King James, is that she saw that it was a proper child whose destiny is not proper. Have you been able to see? And because she saw, she preserved him. That preservation was what led them out of the wilderness. Other people had a, your excuse will look as if it's good for you. I came to tell you it is not tenable. Because even with the adversity, people are still preserving their life. Your excuse is not good enough. Oh, I came from a family. Oh, I'm disadvantaged. People are still finding a way. If you cannot see it to preserve it. Ha! Huh? I, I cannot tell how you will mourn for what you lose. Ah, people will cry in heaven. Not because God didn't give them a seed, but because they said it was the Egyptian army that took them away from them. Jump on your feet. You will lift up your voice for three minutes. My seed will not die. Ah, I, I, I thought you will begin to pray already. This seed will not die. It's two minutes. There are still two things I want to touch tonight. Oh, please pray. Oh, you are not praying. You are not praying. If you know what God has called you to be, what he has planted within you, you will roar. You will pray better than you are doing. What God has put within my spirit will not die. He called me to the nations. He called me to the nations. This seed will not die. Shakapanga pakopekanda takia. Can you see your destiny in front of you, my brother? If you see the prosperity, you will pray more than you are doing. If you see the prosperity, you will pray more than you are doing. My sister, if you see the child that you are about to bat, you will pray more than you are doing. This womb will carry destiny. My seed will not die. Oh, you are not praying. You know? Somebody is still not seeing. Somebody is still not seeing destiny. Somebody is still not seeing that your destiny is a proper one. Somebody is still not seeing. Please see. Please see. No matter the cost, please see. One more minute, please see you. Sheka pakamba taska prondo takataya. Ah, ah. Pray like you know what you are seeing. Oh. Pray like you know what you are seeing. Can two minutes of prayer preserve this seed? The seed of God within me will not die. I arise as a watchman over my destiny. This seed will not die. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Sit down. I want to quickly give you the two. Well, let me say something in person. Still on this issue of seed. I always tell people of a story in 1 Kings chapter 3. 16 to 27. You read it when you get home. The story of the two prostitutes. The first sign of the wisdom of Solomon. They came to Solomon and said to him clearly. One of them said, Me and this woman, we live together. And I got pregnant. Because that's the mercy of God. Even when a man is into prostitution. God still ensures that the man still has a seed. What I'm saying is that sometimes it is not righteousness that brings about the giftings of God in a man. is mercy. Mercy is so powerful that God sees what you will do in the future. And he was already showing you in mercy, even when you were in your mother's womb. Was a prostitute yet had a seed. Because prostitution is to sell your body. So you are a wife of multiple men. And that's what people have with God. Serving God and mammon. Serving God and sin. So the definition of that man's life is that he's a what? He's a prostitute. So the woman said, I judge myself to be a prostitute. And I have a prostitute also as a family member, this woman. But something happened yesterday night. 
He said, this woman slept. And she slept so much that she rolled over a seed and killed it. That's how many people have killed destiny. It wasn't the enemy you slept. It wasn't the destiny in the days when you should be guarding. You slept so much that you rolled over until it was your own hand that killed the seed. You see, there are many people that actually God warned them of the pit ahead. It was their own leg that entered it. They chose to be disobedient. And you will be shocked at many marriages that God warned people concerning. But they, their head will just be stubborn. They rolled until they killed the child. But the other woman said, my own was not that I killed the child. My own was that I slept too deep until the enemy came and stole the child from me. That's another problem. You have not killed it, but you are not watching it. I pray for somebody here today. Your discernment is increasing in this meeting. Let your amen roar like thunder. I didn't kill it, but I slept and the enemy took it. And I told you something about a watcher. Accurate naming. Because in the middle of the night, do you know this woman accepted that the dead child is a child? All through the night, she was looking at the dead child and totally accepted that, ah, there's nothing that can come out of me again. But she said, as I got up, I took the child to the morning light. All of a sudden, I decided to check again. Some of us will need to do a review over our life again. Is this all that God called me to be? Your destiny is traceable to your name. Your name should be telling you that you are more than who you are. Oh, by the time you, you begin to think of the name you bear, you should be knowing this is destiny calling and more than this. This one that I'm living, something has happened. I must get it back. So she took a matter to the king and said, I came to have back what is mine. I prophesy to somebody today, anything that you have lost in this conference, God is giving you back. Oh, let your amen roar like thunder. If it's time, if it's resources, if it's help, God is giving you back now. Ah, let your amen be loud. I want to go by extension even to parents. Because sometimes it is what parents that have lost or what they lost that we are reaping from. Anything parents have lost. Anything people have lost in your lineage. As you arise to, from this meeting, you become the new order of the recovery. Let your amen roar like thunder. We're going to quickly to the second prayer point. Sit down. I'm about to pray again. So, let me jump. So, he says to the watchman, and we have seen what a watchman is supposed to be. But you will notice something in that text in Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 7. That he begins to speak about hearing all of a sudden. He says... Thou shalt hear the word of my mouth, and then you will warn them. The man, son of man, begins as a watchman, but is ending as a judge. He begins first as a man who is watching, but now he is getting instruction to become a man to issue judgment. He said, You will warn them, you will correct them, and so on and so forth from other translations. Because every judge lives his life guided by a rule book. I've had the opportunity to attend court sessions before. And I'm seeing that judges just don't make a judgment until they've consulted the rule book, the constitution. They look at the constitution, not the kind of the one we have in Nigeria. Don't, anything that I'm giving, just know that Nigeria is another spiritual problem. Just leave Nigeria. God will solve our problem. Not the kind of court in Nigeria. But if you go to the real court... Where things are done the way it's supposed to be done. They follow a rule book. So God is introducing to the man that the man will not live by himself. He will live by the constitution that is given to him to administer justice. Listen to me. As you begin to rise as a watchman, you will need to govern your life by following God. And you must follow his instructions. Instruction will determine your destiny. Even in the day that the instruction will be you alone, I beg you in the name of God, 
fight to know the voice of God and to follow it, irrespective of what will happen. Then the consequences, but jump into the river of obedience. If you can live by this, life will be easy. Because there are many things that you cannot see about tomorrow, that the one who sees tomorrow is instructing you to follow a path. If many people have obeyed the rule book and they have said what he said that they should say, their life will be easier. So a judge understands that he must follow what he hears. See what Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 says. He said, I will stand upon my watch as a watchman set upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say. He's a watchman but he's living in accordance to what he's hearing. The seeing eyes and the hearing here, those are two things that every child of God needs to be able to see and then to be able to hear. I won't be able to go through all of the other things that I have to say, but I will stop in this important point. Is that you see, every time a judge is about to be appointed in the physical, there is something that is always done. As a matter of fact, it is not only a judge, be it any great man, and that's applicable in, even in our country. Once an appointment is about to be done, one of the things that you will see is that they begin to assess the man's life. As a matter of fact, the things that he hid well when he was young, that nobody knew that was part of his life, all of a sudden, because now he's about to take a position, one way or the other, those things begin to come up. That is because before a judge becomes a judge, one thing that must be checked in his life is that he cannot be guilty of the same sin that he will judge. You see, the reason why we judge certain things and they are refusing to succumb to the words of our judgment is because you are also guilty. So, they will check that man side by side. That do, Are you qualified to be a judge? Because you cannot afford to have a case in court and then they will now set you to become the judge. No. So, every judge gets to that position having a lifestyle that is free from every form of condemnation. As a matter of fact, he couldn't have been convicted for him to become a judge. You can go and study it. He, he couldn't have passed through all of those things that will now make him into a guilty person when he has been called to judge. So one thing that everyone who seeks to be a judge is that he must be free from the accuser pointing his finger to him again and saying there's still something there. That's why Jesus Christ had to come out to say that the prince of this world came to me. He, he assessed me. But the reason why I have the authority that I have is that he could not find his part in me. You see, the moment a man attains that level whereby the enemy cannot lay claim onto anything in his life, that man has begun to win with God. God can now give him the authority, the stature to judge nations. Not many people have gotten to that point. It, it was men like Elijah that God did and said, Before God, whom I stand, I shut the heavens. And by my, I'm the one that will still open it. If I don't say it's open, it won't be open. The body of Christ in Nigeria, we are still trying to attain that level. That's why we can't choose a president yet. Because until we get to a point whereby the, the, the devil cannot point and say, ah, there's still a pattern of me here. Ah, then we cannot control things. Because the devil accuses men. As a matter of fact, he sits there for a long time. That years to come, by the time that man arrives, he will be shocked at the things that are still in his life. And now we end with one story. It's the story of David and Nathan. Many of us know the story of David and Nathan because when David and Nathan came together in scripture, it was because Nathan had come to give David an opportunity to judge a matter. And the interesting thing about that matter that David was going to judge was a matter about himself, but he did not know. 
Because the first person that the judge will need to judge, you, you want to be a judge, is you, you will first judge. You will first put yourself upon the balance. Because Jesus said, if you judge yourself, you won't be judged though. If you can sit down and assess your life, am I even qualified for this thing that I'm asking for? Am I even ready for what God can do with my life? If he announces me this way, <laughs> I hope it won't be trouble. So Nathan brought the case of David to David, but David did not know. Because the anointed man David had killed his own trusted servant without blinking an eye. I want to ask you, how do men get to that point? Whereby a man we kill, and he didn't blink. You know, David had moved on. As a matter of fact, he has married the woman without any guilt. And you will think you cannot get there. But let me warn you, you can get there. my heart oh god oh one more minute please pray Sister Prayo, Sister Prayo. I'm begging you, please pray, please pray, please pray, please pray. I'm begging you, please pray. Let me give you one more minute, please pray. me now that I'm young. Deal with me now that I'm still young. Deal with me now that I'm not yet exposed. Deal with me in the wilderness now. One more minute. One more minute. One more minute, please pray. Oh, thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I trust that God, beyond what I've said, He will join you with you. Please join your hands very quickly. Let me pray for you very quickly. Everywhere God sends me, he says to me that there is a David waiting for the anointing of this Samuel. David remained in the wilderness until Samuel appeared. And I'm going to ask the ministering angels of the Lord to pour his oil upon you where you are. There are Davids, there are Esthers, so that from today, you'll be plunged into that river to walk with God accurately. To begin to understand the fullness of his purpose for your life. Please believe. Please believe. It's not a man show. But it's real. These things are spiritual. All of a sudden, you just realize you know more. The strength to make some decisions. It is God that makes a man to will and to do. You'll just be doing and you don't know something landed upon your head father thank you 
for this short time that we have spent together. I ask tonight, wherever those Davids are, wherever those Esthers are, called for such a time as this, waiting for the appearance of this Samuel. I decree now that the ministering angels that bear vessels of oil begin to move from the left to the right, from the front to the back, and begin to identify them now as I count from one to five. And let the oil that brings about the glory of God that sets you to become a watchman, sets you to become a king, sets you to become all that God has called you to be, let it begin to come upon you now. As I count from one to five, one, two, three, four, five. Let the angels run from seat to seat. Find them for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There are six of you. Six of you is getting stronger. It's getting stronger. It's getting stronger upon you. It's getting stronger upon you. It's getting stronger. It's getting stronger. Touch now. Touch now. Touch. 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 Let it become like a flame of fire. Like a flame of fire. Ushers, please help them as the power of God touches the six of them. Bring them out for me now, very quickly, as it comes like fire. Where are those angels that validate my words? I did not minister spirit. I command you run through this house. Run like fire. Like fire. Like fire. Like fire. Pour those oil. Burning oils. Burning oils. Burning oils. I command those your eyes to see. I command your ears to hear. I command your heart to know. I command alignments. Bring them out for me. Let me lay my hands upon them. There are six of them. It will rest like fire. You can't withstand it. You can't stop it. Touch. Touch. Like fire. Like fire. Like fire. Like fire. Ushers, where are they? Where are they? Touch, Holy Ghost. I just need to place my hand upon them. Raise him up. Fire! Born, 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 born. I anoint you for more. Born, born. You will burn like fire. You will burn like fire. Bring her here. Touch, touch, touch. Out! Oh, thank you, Jesus. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Like fire, like fire, like fire, burn! Saka Panda Katabra, bring her, just try and get her home very quickly. Very quickly, very quickly, very quickly. Holy Ghost, touch this one. Pour oil upon her head. Pour oil, pour oil. Ah, Kanenata. You will do many for him, many. You will bath, you will bath, you will bath, you will bath, you will bath. They won't stop you, they won't stop you. Reda Gande, Sahila, Kaya, Brandosa, Rata, Zina, Kande, Taya. Touch Holy Spirit, touch more, 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 more. More Jesus, more Jesus, more Jesus. More Jesus. More Jesus. More Jesus, more Jesus. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Ta 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 born 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 for him born for him born for him oh thank you father everybody as i say this i want you to scream loud and clear i receive i want you to shout it at the top of your voice Pastor told me touch something and then I would just make declarations concerning it. So you go with those flames. Some of you will dream differently tonight. Receive the spirit of wisdom. I receive. Shout it is I receive. I receive. I'll just make those declarations and I'll be done. I beg of you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm seeing someone with a swollen half face. I don't know if he's a family member because there's nobody like that here. Half of the person's face looks swollen. 
Does anybody have a family member like that? I'm seeing it. And I'm seeing it compressed back to normal. Receive the spirit of wisdom. Receive staying power with God. Receive angelic help. Right now, for this remaining one, just say amen loud and clear. As I make this declaration, for some of you, you will feel it in your bodies. Some of you will feel it after today. I decree right now for everyone in this conference, listening here and online, your eyes are now declared opened. By the mercies of God, I decree right now, your eyes are now opened. By the mercies of God, I decree now, your ears are now opened. That purifying fire of God that makes a man walk consistently only with God. From your crown of your head to the sole of your feet, that fire falls upon you now. Every one of you with giftings, every one of you with special gifts within you, the one you know, the one you don't know, the one you value, the one you have not valued. I stand as him called by God and I command right now those gifts that God has placed within you to be answers to many. They are now declared activated now. I activate it now. I activate it now. The lady is under the sound of my voice. You have been called in that order of this honor. Men, women who will bat Samuels. Women who will bat quality men that will set things in order. Your wombs are beyond your use. They are God's medium for bringing things out. Right now I declare. The hand of the Lord comes upon you now in the name of Jesus. All of you that carry special grace of intercessors to bad nations, hunger, passion, grace for prayer is coming upon you now in the name of Jesus. The Bible says one shall chase a thousand. Right now, for as many people as are here tonight, I decree three more declarations one i decree right now you are strengthened to become a man like a thousand oh say amen like you mean it receive the strength of a thousand men receive the strength of a thousand men receive the strength of a thousand men they've been said by god i can run through a troop by god i can scale through the fence I decree right now for everyone who is weak and weary. Receive strength right now in the name of Jesus. Let me say, God has taught my hands to war and my fingers to fight. What are those things that are skills in your hand that God wants to use to bring about solutions and answers? I decree right now, finally, the insight, the revelation, the inspiration. That will make you to do business with these things to command profit. God is bringing it to your part. So shall it be in the name of the Father. Oh, let your amen run like thunder. So shall it be in the name of the Son. So shall it be in the name of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and give a clap offering unto Jesus.